find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I keep forgetting I have a script for this one. Three, two. Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast, the show where we get geeky talk tech, social media, and more with local nerds that use it and live around the Pittsburgh, PA area. Usually, I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter, coming at you from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. With me on the couch, it's Katie Dudas at Kay Dudders on the Twitters. What up? Oh, I gotta fix your shot. You're like a mile away. <laughs> you're like a mile away, but at least you're not crooked this time. We fixed that. So, Wait, uh... yeah, <laughs> hold, hold on to that. <laughs> hold on to that. Um, and why well, yeah, can you uh, pull the mic a little bit closer too? Um, and also with us on the line is uh, John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter from his uh, command center in Dormont. That's me. You guys are having... Katie looks all lonely. I'm on the awesome cast, and I'm on the at. <laughs> of course looks all lovely on the couch. Of course you can join us here at awesomecast.net where you can find this and our little tech bites or whatever we're going to call them. We're still figuring that out, but we got a daily uh, thing going on four days a week as well. Uh, it's part of the Awesome Cast Network we started last week. You can check out all of that kind of stuff and we'll, we'll let you know about them a little bit here later in the show. You can also hit us up, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, if you have an awesome thing of the week or let us know or comment on anything we talked about at uh, awesomecast on the Twitter or awesomecast on Facebook and Google+. Plus, so please subscribe and rate us all the places especially itunes but we're also on youtube that's where the video the new video segments are stitcher spreaker and iHeartRadio. and you join us live tuesdays at live.sorgatronmedia.com at about 6 30 p.m eastern times about when we're setting up for the show you might get a little bit of movie talk in there hey really if you go if you're podcasting tech podcasting fans um our friend malengo from the Rambling Movie Minute, actually had an appearance as a uh, the uh, guest host, guest co-host, or uh, whatever it is, guest on uh, Court Killers, uh, the show by uh, Tom Merritt and Brian Brushwood, who Brian Brushwood, of course, right now of Hacking the System on National Geographic Channel. Um, but go check that out, CourtKillers.com. I see him talking about movies, and check out the Rambling Movie Minute to see us talking about movies uh, with Mad Mike uh, from up from uh, New York and, and and having some fun with that. We're talking a lot of Spider Man this week, if you're into that. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. Um, so, guys, I, I I I was playing a little bit with the Pebble, um, and uh, by the way, I love that at the Apple Store when I was getting my battery replaced, uh, the guy had exactly the same model, red and everything, Chilla. Um, and we're talking nice. some smart watches. Um, it, the uh, the the uh, the uh, the Apple the Apple workers not completely into the idea of the Apple Watch either. Just want to put that out there. Oh, really? that, it was a really interesting discussion. I had a couple of them talking about that between that versus uh, the Android Wear. You know, I was talking about how I had glass for a minute. You know, you know, and and, and you know, and I, I want to touch base with you at some point on how that's going with glass. Um, but I, I was playing with just you know, hadn't for a little bit. Was looking for some new apps to play with on this guy. Um, so uh, I found one called Sober Up. Um, and, and I actually got to use it last night a little bit. Not that I do a lot. And, you know, I'm not somebody that goes out a lot uh, to the, um, you know, to, to the bar. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, local my local watering establishment. <laughs> uh, but so I, I had a so chance. You have to... low tolerance. What's that? So you have low tolerance. I don't have so low. You, you need this. I, I have low. T Why do you say I have low tolerance? <laughs> Well, if you're not going to the bar very often, I'm you not gotta, going you know, to the bar, but I can handle my tolerance. liquor, sir. I got a wonderful <laughs> bottle of vodka upstairs that I experience every once in a while. But I, I found this one called Sober Up for the for the Pebble Watch, and, I, and there's renditions of these I, I, I saw uh, for your smartphones. I'm sure you can find some kind of alcohol calculator, but it's really cool. And I got it here. You like the new app cam we have here going on? Yeah, we'll improve that. We're gonna try to get a better camera on this too. Um, but as you go, as you get drinks, um, you can actually add to it. And it tells your your estimated blood alcohol uh, count, um, and uh, it, it lets you know. There's a counter at the bottom there that lets me know how long it is until I've sobered up. Um, 
And as you go, it'll actually, Sorry, as you go, and you know, I'll bring up the picture here so you can maybe see a little bit better. As you go, it'll tell you what you should be experiencing at this level of blood alcohol content. Um, like, you know, the, the example, like mild euphoria, uh, relaxation at, at a 0.054, it's telling me, uh, extroversion at point. 0675 blunted feelings over expression as i go higher and higher anger and sadness for instance um so i know i think it's a really cool way to look at it because you know it's one of those like well i can't really go i feel fine enough to go home why you know why not you know um the only question i have with this i mean it's just generally i guess it shows beer on here so that's kind of the general idea um but you know i don't think you're gonna pretty much assess very well for stronger drinks you know um but it was uh, it was kind of nice to have a little more confidence in that as you're going out because I'm always like oh I, I can't have more than a beer or two or I'm not cool with driving and I don't want to risk it you know um, just because I, I it's not something I do all the time so really cool use of this and it's something that I can like you know just go ahead and pull up and do on my wrist as I'm sitting there at the bar and not pull out my phone and fiddle with that you know um, so uh, there you go there's the killer app for Pebble watches. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's all based on it's all based on the average. Beer? Yeah, I think it is. I, I, I really think it is. It's um, I, I mean, you, you do put in whether uh, you know, your gender and your weight, uh, so it's going to calculate on top of that as well. Um, so I, yeah, I, it's it's uh, it's an estimate. You know, it, it, it this it's just like the maps. This is a guiding tool. This is not a mm -hmm. you know end all be all solution. If you get pulled over, you do the breathalyzer. But my watch says I'm, I'm okay. You know, it's not going to hold up. You know, so just don't make, don't. It's a guiding thing. For sure. Or if you're like, man, I had three beers. Uh, this is telling me it takes me it takes me about an hour. Well, actually, I'm about 11 hours with 13 beers. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I, I noticed that on their site. The, the eight beers is eight hours, 49 minutes in their, in their example. I think that's interesting. So it's over, it's over an hour per beer, which is typically what they claim. And that's, but, that's, that's your blood alcohol content that is for the stuff mm -hmm. to get out of your system you know get filtered out so i i mean you know what that means i don't know you know um but um do but you, can you enter the alcohol level i don't see anything to do it with this it's so you have like five mad elves and it would be like you're cool <laughs> <laughs> well, i don't think i'll even tell you that for i don't know where we at i'm gonna get like five it's telling me They'll tell me you're at point six six nine, and you have some uh, blunted feelings. Oh, <laughs> and I think that is over the what's the legal limit? Point oh eight or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you'll still be experiencing something, you know. And it'll take you about four hours and twenty seven minutes to sober up. Oh, okay. Good. So, um, but no, it's cool. It's uh, but it's on the uh, Pebble app, and I'm getting a little feedback from you there, Chilla. Um, Sorry, no, that was me. Yeah, I accidentally put my computer to sleep. <laughs> um, so but no. what we need is a bar to sponsor this, where we test out several apps, and um, we'll, we'll each, you know, Chilla, you, and myself, we'll, we'll volunteer, and we'll get dug in on this, and we'll just try a few different apps it'd and see good, which is most It'd correct. be a good crossover with Should mm -hmm. I Drink That, for sure. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Wouldn't we need Pebble to sponsor a good good few watches? And mm -hmm. well, One of the things that I did, if you if you ever want to kind of give your, your Pebble a different look... Um, I posted a link in the chat. So there's a website. It's called Decal Girl. Don't let the um, the name fool you. There's a lot of guy type stuff decals on there. But one of the things Decal Girl does is they make skins for a multitude of different devices, anything from an Xbox to whatever. Um, but you can get a de uh, you can get a Tetris skin you can get all kinds of stuff for the devices so I, i've actually used this website for modding xboxes and things like that but it's pretty cool because anytime something gets popular this place comes out with a way to skin it so nice um, yeah, I've, I, seen I've seen some ones too on here where they uh if it's like an iphone or android skin they actually a lot of times have a a background for you to download and set the background on the device to the same thing and it all blends together. Nice. Um, well, that's it'd be cool. kind of cool if you coordinated a skin with a with a clock face too. And the Pebble ones are only about those. five bucks. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, you you you're you're not you're not breaking the bank on this, you know? Oh, there's a Spider Man one. Mad Mike, are you still in the chat? 
<laughs> there you go. There you go. It looks like they have 1,614 different skins to pick from. Oh, geez. Wow. Go check that out. Decalgirl.com if you want to check that out. Awesome. Awesome. Chilla, what is your awesome thing of the week? So my awesome thing of the week is, and while it's not necessarily fully technology related, um, one of the major pop culture con type companies, Wizard World, um, has recently started buying up a lot of the Comic Cons all over the United States. Um, I'm not 100% sure why they're doing this, but one of their most recent acquisitions is Pittsburgh Comic Con. Nice. So this year, Pittsburgh Comic Con will not exist, and it will be Wizard Con. Um, I actually travel usually to Philly every year to go to the Wizard Con there because it's the closest one to here. Um, and they draw a lot of artists. They have a lot of technology stuff there. Uh, well, not necessarily technology from a, a hey, look at this cool gadget. I, they did have some drones there last year, actually. But, but they do have a lot of video gaming and things like that. Um, so this year it's going to be September 11th, 12th, and 13th. And they're actually moving it back to David L. Lawrence Convention Center, um, which is pretty cool. It's not going to be out at the Monroeville Con Convention Center. Um, and one of the things to pay attention to is on their site, they show all of the different special guests that are coming. Um, I noticed a week ago, um, it was pretty much Lou Ferrigno. And, and over the last couple weeks, actually over the last week, I think, um, they've started to add a bunch of additional um, famous special guests coming in. I don't, I don't see... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, they got uh, James, James Marsters from Buffy and uh, Angel, uh, Sean Packard Flannery from uh, Boondock Stains. Uh, oh, the Green Ranger will be there. The, yes, he will. And he's a, he's a great crowd pleaser. Mm -hmm. He's a lot of fun to just watch and, and whatnot. So I will actually be traveling again to Philly um, for at least one more year mm -hmm. and see how Pittsburgh goes. But wizard con is is a great time to be had by all and I'm, I'm glad i mean they're doing it in cleveland now pittsburgh um like i said i go to philadelphia they actually do a new york one that kind of coincides um actually close to at least it used to close to to new york comic con um but i'm, I'm almost waiting for them to hit at a minimum one per state or something like that so <laughs> That might Check be it. it out this that year and get your tickets early because usually it sells out. They fran they franchise in the uh, the Comic Cons at this point. That's great. Uh, no, yeah, because it's definitely uh, I, there's been complaints. You know, one of the first kind of videos we did here at Sorgatron Media was going and touring the Pittsburgh Comic Con with our friends at Comic Book Pit, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan and the guys over there, um, and it just it just doesn't. Eh. It is what it is, right? Um, yeah. And, and to bring it in, in this, like they already had announced bringing it into the city, which I think is your first thing, you know. And obviously, somebody that knows how to market it, and it was very kind of locally run, and, and not very well, I don't think. I don't feel, you know. I, I, I was, you know, still, yeah. You, how do you have Stanley there, not pack the place, and I can walk directly into the room where he's he's talking, where he's doing the Q and A, mm -hmm. you know, versus I could barely even catch a glimpse of him without paying like another hundred bucks at a uh, Baltimore Comic Con. I mean, that, I think it's a huge difference, and, and that goes to show, you know, how that was being run in advance uh, previously. So, I mean, it's franchise. It's a big company behind it now, but, it'll, you know, they didn't get this big without doing it right, right? So Exactly. So, it, and I don't, know, I don't know if they still make the magazine or not, mm -hmm. but to your, to your point of um, one of the things that I was not overly thrilled about New York Comic Con was the crowd. Mm -hmm. Um it, it was ridiculous to just even move around. It just grew. And Wizard it World, grew so much. Yeah. Wizard World seems to at least cap the the number of people in the building uh, appropriate for such a structure. Well, um, the last time I went to New York, it was just lines and lines and lines. And I know you can buy a weekend pass and get in a little earlier every day. Not everyone is fortunate enough to no, do that. And, so. and the other thing is, I think they also like uh, appropriate so much for uh, you know how many people are going to go down to the sessions and the and, and everything. Mm -hmm. It's not just on the floor, but the floor does get filled because where else are they going to go, right? And they do pack that place pretty good, but it's a giant space. Unfortunately, everybody wants to be in the practically the same room, um, so mm -hmm. it, it doesn't spread out just because of the, the the masses that are there. 
So, um, but no, really cool. I'd like to see where this goes. So, awesome. Katie. Hi. We attended something uh, last week that mm -hmm. I think is your awesome thing of the week. Yeah, we went to uh, Indiegogo event and um, we they were kind of touring the city. There were several places. I think they were Alpha Lab and a few other locations around the city kind of talking about what they're doing and seeing what we're doing in the city of Pittsburgh, which is also pretty cool. And um, we had a speaker explain um, exactly how it works and... For me, it was rather eye-opening. I, you know, I'm used to you know things like Kickstarter, where it's you're, you're raising money for a particular item or cause or whatnot. But the way we discussed it, it was more of a feedback, um, something to directly talk to your audience. You're you're pitching this to your audience, and you have a direct ear to your audience, these potential consumers, and um, just taking advantage of that, and not just looking oh dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign. No, it's it's whether or not um, you can, if there's an interest in your product, uh, maybe how you can modify your product. And it was, they were encouraging you to have conversations with the people who were pitching in money and, and you know, directly through email or whatnot, and kind of getting their feedback on the whole thing, which was kind of mind blowing. Because, like I said, when you usually think of um, things like this, it's just the dollar signs. Mm -hmm. But this was more about the, the collaborations. They mentioned uh, thinking about it as like another social media tool. Yeah, that, that that was really kind of big too. I, and I know this this was really more talked, I think, towards the people making objects, making a product, mm -hmm. right? Uh, versus like maybe people making a movie. It's like uh, basically Indiegogo has done several verticals. Verticals. They basically started with production and video and and movies and TV. But of course, this is the tech arm of it. They have a, a, a kind of a medical bills help version of it, um, and, and they, they cover a lot. And 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 they, I think they were doing a lot of press last week because I also heard on triangulation, tri triangulation over on the uh, Twit Network uh, interview with one of the co-founders um, talking about that. Um, and and the idea that like the, and they're very open. They're like, no, no, seriously, you can fund anything. They're like, and people kept asking, like, wait, 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 you, what are the limits though? They're like, no, there are no limits. You know, they're like, yeah, basically, like as long as it's not illegal, uh, we're good. <laughs> so uh, it's a very open platform for that. And um, and and one I've not uh, experimented with uh, just yet. We did have a little bit of Kickstarter experience, and of course, we have the Patreon for this if you want to support. Awesome cast at patreon.com slash awesome cast. Be our boss there. Um, but um, no, yeah, I think it was a, a really interesting to kind of see see uh, uh, what what they had to say about Indiegogo, learn a little bit more about it. Um, I, I'm leaning towards this for, you know, whatever my next project could be. And, and, and the talk really kind of got me thinking outside the box, too. You know, like like you were talking about, you know, like, like more than just the dollar signs, like maybe more next time I want to pitch a show, get more of a feedback loop. Yeah. Right. Because I don't feel like I definitely don't feel like I did that had that so much with Kickstarter. You know, I had a few people to pitch in, and then and one per, big one pitch in uh, and started talking and fell out. You know, they, there wasn't that con constant thing. You know, uh, it, this isn't just a a thing I attached to my Facebook. Yeah. You know, kind of idea. It was um, the hardware director uh, John uh, Vasquez. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry, I wanted to grab his name because it was like I said, he did a fantastic job of just talking about it, and he did a very interesting. Um, taking a business card strategy too oh yeah tell about that <laughs> uh he was talking about that so if you ever run into this gentleman um if he takes your business card and he puts it in the front right pocket he's very interested and in, he'll be reaching out to you personally left pocket the right pocket people are more enthusiastic they're they're really into it they have a great plan left pocket people are kind of in it but not full in so he might consider contacting you uh but if he sticks you in his back pocket here um don't expect anything because it's more of a just if, if you're just looking to exchange cards he's just going to stick it back air <laughs> So just say, you know, it's, it's a, that's good a good strategy. Idea. That's, good strategy. It's really good strategy. Yeah. I really like that. We're all going to steal that. I, I'm hoping that, yeah, I'm definitely stealing it. And that's the one thing that I wish someone, and I think there's still a lot of room for this to be solved, but someone needs to solve the business card issue. I mean, I have stacks of business cards that I end up typing into some kind of Rolodex. And there's been other products that, that kind of try to sort that out, but, I like this way because I would probably just take the back pocket and not even bother or just throw either throw them out or throw them in a drawer and be like, eh, mm -hmm. I can go back through there later, which I probably never would. Mm -hmm. It was interesting. I actually got one uh, last night. I was talking with the guy and I, we, I don't know why it was like the like like we caught each other's name 
and we didn't really get exchange business cards. Like that's the way the conversation mm-hmm. went. And I wrote down his name and he spelled it for me and stuff. And it was like, oh, just find him on LinkedIn. And I found him on LinkedIn and friended him and stuff. And just like, okay, you know, here we go. Um, but yeah, and I actually, uh, you guys remember Bump, right? Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, I, I knew something like that. And yeah. I thought Google bought them, and I thought we were going to see. I thought we were going to too. Like it was. I actually got like like very angry. I think it was the Flash I was watching where they had a bar, and they're like, "Oh, you got this thing where you can uh, bump our phones, and now you got my contacts." I'm like, "It's freaking bump," you know, mm-hmm. like we've never heard of it before. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm surprised it's not like built into every Android device by this point, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but I'm sure there's other applications for that technology we're not even thinking of. So, um, but no. Uh, but no, it was really good talk. It, it was it was a. I, I talked this about uh, about this a bit on the Good Morning podcast as well at Sorgatron dot com, uh, followed by Refresh Pittsburgh, which was also also fun too. So, but we'll mention that here a little bit later. So, any, anything else about Indiegogo before we move on? Uh, oh, uh, the the sending surveys and contests with your people. I thought that was a right. good idea too. Right. Um, being able to directly connect with them that way too, and you know, giving them kind of a. They almost get tester products. You could do it that way too. Yeah, I like that that idea about like uh, you've had uh, you know the people fund the first like ten percent or whatever, mm-hmm. and you give them bonus for referring. I guess they have a system built in for for referrals. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you re- they refer so many people, then you'll bump up their 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 level or something like that. That that was really really cool. And he kept inviting is, is people. A- to, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just saying, he kept inviting people to, if you needed assistance, they were there to help. Yeah. Like, they, it wasn't something where you just set it up and they, they don't want anything to do with he's you. Like, they no, want he's you like, yeah, email me. I'm like, okay. Cool. You, like, really? You, you're not getting flooded on that one? You know, I feel like <laughs> I feel like every crackpot with an idea would be hitting them up on that thing. But So, so the, the, the survey piece, is that a platform they have? Or think, is that they were just saying you need to, you need to make sure you survey? I think it's part of the platform because they're really selling this. Uh, like, like I said, like, like this is another social platform for you to manage during your campaign, and you need to, okay. right? Um, and you, there was that, and you need to not be shy about talking to your network, your friends, your family, extended, you know, network of friends, fans, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, I know that's one problem I have is anytime I do something, I feel like I'm bothering everybody. Hey, guys, check out my new thing, you know. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's it, and I think that's where a lot of people kind of like, 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 oh, yeah, but I don't want to bother people too much. But I, I really want to get this out there, but I don't want to bother people too much. And and you really do need to go full throttle, especially if you're in a Indiegogo Kickstarter kind of thing. Like that mm-hmm. needs to be your life before, during, and after if it's successful. You know, even if it's not successful, like just do a post on It's like, okay, how are we going to do this next time? You know, um, but uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I'd like to I like to really kind of throw throw some ideas at this thing and uh, see what we can do. You know, I've seen so many just like we have this idea and here's a really poor video I shot on my iPhone and uh, my idea doesn't even match the description underneath, you know, uh, for this thing I want to do. <laughs> and uh, somebody locally did one of those and we all laughed at him. Um, <clears throat> We're terrible own. people. <laughs> hey, he owes me money, so forget okay. him. Um, anyways, <laughs> that's for another show. Um, <laughs> awesome cast after yeah, for dark. So I was thinking more of the wrestling show, but uh, anyways, uh, no. Hey, but uh, go check out Indiegogo if they're they're around, and check out that interview we gave from Triangulation last week um, um, with the Indiegogo uh, founder, co-founder, something like that. All right, what is stylinity? Ooh, yes. What do we got here? We're getting paid for selfies now, dude. What? Yeah, I know. Um, essentially what this is, it's a uh, program where you they set up some selfie shops. This is how it kind of went in. It started like that, where you would stand in front of a, a selfie camera, obviously, or take a camera, and it would take your selfie. And what it does is it figures out every single thing you're wearing based upon a barcode. So if you just bought something new with, say, Macy's, Target, wherever, you, you scan the barcodes of these individual items, then you model the items, and people will go and use this app and go, wow, I really like what she's wearing. And it gives them the option to make a list to go into the stores and go, hey, here you go. Um, This is what I want to buy. And they're able to find these items. So it's this really neat way to just kind of directly market from people with similar interests. Okay. So maybe if you're not sure, oh, I don't know how exactly to pull this off and off, and someone pulls it off, you can figure out exactly where they bought their items and how much they cost or um, 
so it's, it's and then you get rewarded by these companies for kind of essentially referring. I can't wait to see what it does with my wardrobe. <laughs> <clears throat> so it rewards you to shop and take pictures of yourself, which is I think is pretty cool. And like I said, it's a different, totally different marketing tool, mm-hmm. where you're able to it's a direct you know person to person sale, mm-hmm. which is uh, pretty. That's fantastic. awesome. Uh, it's so like wait, where does it like like is my is my selfie because I'm completely going to do this and see what happens. Like is that then like I have to come to the app and I see what other people are wearing or yeah. is this connect does this connect out to any other networks? It connects. Um, for example, if like I said, I keep using Target because I was there today. Um, if you're wearing something from there, you can click on the link and it might take you to the website depending on the company. So they're basically doing this it's all affiliate links out kind mm-hmm. of kind of uh, idea here. So like I. I really want to try this. I'm downloading it now. I want to see what the, what it says uh, with what I'm wearing here. If you go on audio, I'm wearing a tie from Loot Crate because we've gone corporate today. Our uh, incorporation uh, arrived. And uh, and uh, we'll do Ninja Turtle Sesame Street mashup t-shirt. So um, let's see. Uh, we'll do that. Oh, I got to log in. Yeah. Uh, log you in you might Facebook, need the barcodes for what you're my wearing stuff. too. Oh, so like I actually like it. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, you're so, going to need the barcodes. So it's the picture plus this. So like I, it, they're making me do a lot of work. It's not just an identification kind of well, thing. Well, that's because you're not interested in fashion. If you're interested in fashion, it's not a lot of work. It's oh, fun. oh, <laughs> you're pointing down my fashion sense. Is yes. that what's happening here? I wear the <laughs> finest. I feel I wear the finest stuff for these podcasts. I wear the I finest what loot crate items. <laughs> I wear the finest loot crate items and whatever my mom bought me for my birthday. Um, well, we're gonna we're gonna check this out here. So, so I want to, I want to switch. I want to take a picture and take a picture. Okay. That was it asked me to do next. I would like to access my photos. Okay. I can tag my closet, add a description here. We'll, we'll uh, set this up on the, on the uh, thing. So, so there's a lot to do here. This mm-hmm. is not a simple app, unfortunately. Um, there's, there's a lot of doodads going on here. Um, so I think what you really need to do is take that selfie and then run out to like Nordstrom's or some high-end <laughs> type shopping thing and scan the barcodes for Armani suits. Mm-hmm. And then post that and see what happens. I'm not going to have barcodes for any stuff I have. This is ridiculous. No, that's my point is you go go to the store mm-hmm. and scan a bar. And that, this is where it's going to get interesting. So how do they actually validate the picture in the selfie is what you scanned? I guess is the point I'm trying to make. So you could, you could, I could take a picture of me in my red sweater and post that and, and scan the tag in the store from some high end suit or some high end pair of shoes. Like get, get an old pair of Reebok or yeah, Reebok pump shoes and take a picture of yourself in those and then take a picture with, or scan the tag off of some high end fashionista. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create the brand. best lookbook but, ever on this thing. See, the, the thing <laughs> that you're you're attaching your name and your photo and your Facebook information to this, so you're not going to lie because it's the whole accountability That's true within too. a group yeah. mentality. Wow. <laughs> see what it does now. Like, you don't want to lose your credibility. Put, once you put, like, like they're, they want my, all my vitals. Are you sure this isn't a Tinder backdoor? Because uh, it's got my height, it's got my hair, <laughs> hair color, eye color, skin color. Um, I would think that it would be using, but I think it would be using all of that to actually color match and tone match mm-hmm. your your fashion choices. Oh, your complexion should have a fine winter green. Um, I don't know. Uh, what, what would see, this is the funny thing is, plug in, okay. if you plug in all this information, and and, I, and now I'm interested in the app. Yeah. You plug in all the information without actually taking a selfie. And if it would be almost like a personal shopper, to, mm-hmm. to Sorg's point, based on your complexion, eye color, et cetera, here is what we recommend, height, weight, here's yeah. what we recommend for you. See, to me, that's, that's the trick. How me seeing someone else in an outfit doesn't mean that it's going to necessarily look right on my body type with my mm-hmm. skin tone and everything else. Getting that personal shopper experience is where I would love to have the app. Yeah. So, I'm, do, do they do something like that? Can they can they actually do some kind of match to say here, not based on necessarily 
what you liked from other people's selfies, but based on the information you have put in, can you can it recommend clothing clothing for for your body style? I don't know. Well, probably would it match it up with uh, others? Uh, you know, uh, other people of the same style, right? I mean, it seems to make sense. I would. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, oh. But isn't it going to pull your Facebook friends and just just pass you around with your Facebook friends? How's it going to? I'm sure. I'm sure they're doing something with that information. They get, they almost have to be for for something like this. So um, with those those kind all those kinds of vitals. Yeah. So uh, check that out. It's uh, style. I don't know. Stylinity on the uh, App Store. And is that iPhone only? Yeah, right now. Okay. And at Stylinity on the Twitters. Uh, OneDrive. I feel like this is a chilla pick of the week. Yeah. So both Google and OneDrive, not just not just OneDrive, but Google Drive, mm -hmm. um, made, an, made announcements. And I, I, I just noticed them today. So I don't know if they've been around for longer than that. Um, if you sign up for Bing Rewards with Microsoft, which is free, mm -hmm. which and also earns you credit towards Xbox purchases if you're not using it and you're an Xbox customer, um, but if you merely sign up for their program, they give you 100 gig of free space for two years. Hmm. Now, I'm not sure what's going to happen over that after when that's up, um, but I'm guessing if you actually continue to use Bing Rewards, you could probably based on just doing a few searches in Bing a mm -hmm. day, you could actually get more space or at least continue that at a free rate. Um, at the same time, to help raise security awareness, Google is actually giving you two gig of additional storage by merely going in and verifying your security settings. Wow. <laughs> that's not bad. I mean, that's, that's not, to be yeah. honest, that's not much when it comes to Google Drive, depending on what you're storing up there, but I mean that's that's still something. Um, I mean Dropbox used to do this all the time. Like we'll give you a gig every time somebody signs up, and I have like even though I don't pay for Dropbox anymore, I still have twenty some gigs because all the referrals when I was making everybody else get Dropbox to share files with me uh, for work, you know, um, it, it uh, that can add up, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I'd like to see them go in that direction to like kind of get more people roped in, right? Um, we actually we we were this close to canceling uh, Office 365 because uh, we were just paring down some stuff, trying to you know uh, work on the bills and stuff, right? And I'm just like, you know what? It's only ten bucks. I get slides sent to me randomly all the time, and Keynote, as great as Keynote is, you know the conversion's never perfect, right? Um, right. Plus, it's like you get like unlimited. OneDrive, do it. <laughs> you know, now well, that's where I'm, at. I'm trying to find a place that I can back up a lot of. Uh, mainly, I just want to back up photos, right? Um, and some some small, not, nothing like you work with with video, but more home movie, home video type stuff that I've. I want to be able to accumulate over time. And and what what keyed me into this was uh, cleaning out my grandfather's house. Um, he he moved into a, uh, an apartment, um, cleaning out his house. I have probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I probably have about twelve paper case boxes full of photos and slides, like actual old school, whatever they are, inch and a half by inch and a half. Right, right. Slides like you need a projector for these things. Um, so I've been trying to, over time, also convert those um, to a digital format because obviously those things will deteriorate over time, and I'd like to have those for, for quite some time to come. Yeah. Uh, hand those down, and, and they, they make great gifts for other family members that have never seen um, certain other older family members or their parents at, at when they were younger. Um, but that, that's where I want these types of spaces and, and I think I'm actually about to also pull the trigger on actually enrolling in office 365 merely for that use case of the, oh, the documents are a bonus at this point, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, your touch everywhere, you know, um, <laughs> and especially you, you work in a more corporate environment, you're going to get word files. You can't really work around that. Right. So now, the one thing that, I mean, even though Google's only given you a two gig, 
what I liked about it was to raise, and this was around safer internet day too, mm -hmm. um, to raise awareness around security. The way you got the two gig extra on Google Drive was you checked your recovery information, you checked recent activity, you checked your account permissions, um, you checked your app passwords, and you checked your two-step verification settings. Um, so it got people in the mindset of, oh, this this stuff exists and I should be paying attention to this. So uh, to me, it's a big, it, security's a big deal. Um, so this is just one way to get users, and, and to your point, what's two gig really costing them, especially because I'm sure there's hundreds of thousands of users that aren't that have a Gmail account that aren't even using any of their Google Drive space. Right. Um, right. I look at it as it's even a decent chunk of backup for data on your Android devices. So, all right. I, don't know. I was I was pretty impressed that everyone's starting to give away free space. Not that they weren't before, but it's, it's going to be everybody continuing to give away. Everybody's free space. stuff will just be in the cloud soon, mm -hmm. which will I think help a lot of things. You know, um, but yeah. Well, you know, what won't be in the cloud is pizza. <laughs> Good. It will not. Cloud pizza. You can't, you can't store pizza in the cloud. No, no, no. You can't store the pizza in the cloud, and and, and that's okay. Because uh, then we wouldn't have Slice on Broadway supporting us here. Some good... They're, they're supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with good pizza, and uh, and in a great philosophy with that as well. Uh, abnormally assessed, obsessed with good pizza. Um, we, 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 we can appreciate that for sure. And we, we love the, uh, the, uh, benefits of that. Uh, two locations up here on Broadway Avenue and Beachview, uh, in the South Hills of Pittsburgh and, uh, Carnegie PA down on Main Street. Uh, they make the best darn pizza. It says on their site, they make the best darn pizza sandwiches and salads as Mike can buy. I saw an ad campaign that somebody wants to slap a salad. I don't get it. What has a salad ever done to you? But... They have good sounds there, too. Um, go check them out. And thank them for supporting the show, supporting all the podcasts. Podcast day every Tuesday night here on SorgatronMedia.com uh, for all the shows. And, uh, and and the guests coming in, like Katie, right there. And Malengo on the Rambling Movie Minute before. I ate the pizza. It's in my belly. I'm keeping it. I'm storing it in my belly cloud. There you go. <laughs> belly cloud. In the wow. belly cloud. In the belly cloud. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you them for supporting the show and the network. So uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. First of all, I, I wonder if you guys know a little more information than, than I glommed about this. Because I, I keep reading it, and it's not sinking in. So the Golf Tower here in, in, in Pittsburgh, um, they're doing a light up the golf kind of uh, with your Instagram in Pittsburgh sort of situation. Have you guys, have you guys caught more than, than I have on this on this story? Um, I guess they're. So I thought it was. I thought it was to. I thought they were measuring. They were treating it like a giant mood ring. Yeah, that's what I heard. Okay. Yeah. So, and this actually excites me because I can turn around from my my cube at work and see the golf tower. It and used... It's really cool at night with the lighting and the, and the, right. the sunset. So, um, yeah. From from my understanding is, and, and I'm interested in how they gauge this, but. Somehow they're they're trying to gauge emotion off of Instagram and then kind of give a barometer for positive versus negative oh, Instagram. Th this is going to be so much fun during Steelers games. Well, it, it won't be Steelers games. What? There's no Steelers games now. It'd be well, hockey. not now. Is this only a, a limited time thing they're doing? or? Yeah, it's the 11th. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, when there's no sports seasons, that's probably smart. Um, so yeah, it was, this is. A, what do you mean uh, no sports seasons? We forget the penguins. Oh, you don't like penguins. hockey. What is wrong? It with is you? penguins. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did, did, I'm outside the sports zone right now. What is um, the sports you're talking? What, about? what is this stick ball you're talking <laughs> about here? On um, yeah, ice. That sounds crazy. Must be a Canadian thing. Well, so one of the things, and I and I couldn't find it either. Is are they? Is it all of Instagram? Or is it Instagrams taken in the area? I think I think it's, it, you're tagging your photos with it's it's through the Carnegie Museum of Art, and if you hashtag it the CMOA or the hashtag Distant Feel, it's part of a, an art exhibit with it. It's Distant mm -hmm. Feel, like essentially how photographs and images make you feel. Like even though you have no contact with a particular person, how does this photograph make you feel? Um, that that's what it comes. To, I think that's where a lot of it comes from. 
uh, Catala is the... So, yeah, and they have a link through uh, to tower.cmoa.org, mm-hmm. and you can see there's a sentiment analysis of positive or negative. You can kind of see the swings, and apparently you can check on the current tower status, which is, uh, I guess, like a little bit of green, a little bit of red. Now, for those who don't know, this golf tower, it, it, it's been a thing that's lit up for a while, and it used to be, according to an old Rick Seebeck special on uh, QED, um, apparently they would light it up based on weather. Like what the weather forecast or current or temperature? I, I can't. I'm not entirely sure. I, I think it was forecast actually, um, and certain colors would mean different things. But I think over time, nobody knows what those colors mean anymore. Well, they had a big diagram right, and I think not too long only ago. Only the top lit up. Yeah, no, only, oh, okay. The only top lit up, and the rest of it, they would do stuff like for holidays or like games like didn't it like do a certain thing when like so, somebody hit a home run at a, a pirates game because you mm-hmm. can see it from the stadium so it, it seems to make sense there uh, i've seen it light up and stuff like uh, you know uh, the, the 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 gay gay pride parade day i, I think they, they let it up different colors too you know i mean they, they, they do a lot of stuff with it you know it, it's something fun they do with the skyline here mm-hmm. so um, but no, yeah, check that out. Tower.cmoa.org if you want to find out more about the uh, golf tower mood ring, Pittsburgh's mood ring. Um, I was excited about this. That starts tomorrow. Don't forget. It yeah. starts tomorrow. So go, so look up if you're driving around Pittsburgh uh, for the next bit. Um, LG made a plastic version of Google's cardboard VR. Yay. Uh, I, have we talked much about this on the show with the cardboard VR thing? Basically, you can make something. They, they were passing these out at Google I.O. last year. Um, but you can make it completely yourself for like less than 20 bucks with pieces of cardboard and other lenses and stuff you can get. And uh, you put your Android phone in it. You download an app and people are developing stuff for this. Um, and you have a VR headset with your Android phone. I actually found a version that I can use my Nexus 7 with um that i can make but but again like lg making one specifically for their g3 phones fits right in there it's a little more robust it's based on that open source um um uh, design that they put out for the cardboard uh, uh, almost a year ago now. Um, so I, I i don't i have not heard of any great applications for this but there's i'm sure plenty of people working with it i guess um Free with purchase for now, they're saying with the with the new phone, um, and I guess this is maybe a little bit of an answer to uh, Samsung doing kind of a version of the Oculus VR technology, the Gear VR, that basically kind of runs off of their phones. I don't know what do you guys think about this. Like our phone, when where's Apple's version? That's the other thing. Where's Apple's version of this? Um, what do you guys think about it? Like, how useful is this going to be? Putting the VR well, on that, our phones, or is this? I mean, it's going to make it more accessible. That's for sure. So it's it's definitely more accessible, and I think Sam, since your point, Samsung's coming out with a, the same type of thing. I've heard they're actually going to have demo units and Best Buys for for people um, to to kind of test out. I guess my question is, really like the Hololens, VR scares me from um, the aspect of someone can come right up behind you and you may may or may not know they're standing there. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess here's where I, where do you, I see myself using the HoloLens. If I could have it right now every day, one of my biggest things is um, multiple monitors on my desktop at work, my laptop at home, wherever I am, right? Now you could potentially really take any window off of your monitor and drag it into free space like it was Minority Report. Hmm. Um, And in Minority Report, I think they were still limited to a physical screen type projection. This lets you swipe wherever. The VR goggles, I, I can't necessarily wrap my brain around where I would want to use them. So right now we're talking and we're on a hangout. I don't necessarily 
know if I would want all of that right against yeah. my face. And we've experimented with that a little bit too. Like Google Class we mm-hmm. used to. I don't think they do any more uh, Hangouts. And it was again, it was right there, you know, which was weird because then I have a camera yeah. pointing the other way, right? Um, so, mm-hmm. so that was a little funky, you know. Like we're watching Monday Night Raw, and everybody can see what I'm watching and and my TV. Well, and I feel like I feel like that. That even that even makes more sense to me because I can still see what's going on around me. Mm-hmm. And if we're in a hangout and I'm like Sorg, I don't know how to fix. I don't know. I don't know how. And this is a bad example where I feel like I'm jipping Microsoft because they used it, but I don't know how to fix a light switch. Can you walk me through it? And I, we enter a hangout. I, oh, yeah, and I and always I'm, I always wanted to use that. I always wanted to use that for like fixing my car with my with my father in law or something, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, like exactly. that seemed to make sense for me. So I, I guess that's just a different application, but we just didn't see too much of it. Of course, industry is going to be using this thing for, for a good long while, and, and mm-hmm. versions of it, I think, uh, to come. Um, so but, yeah. so short, of, short of gaming, and, and I'm, I'm more than open to, to the idea of, of using... Of, of, but short of gaming, I'm not 100% sure where I would necessarily use it. Right, right. I can't even think of any augmented reality applications, like where you would want. The, the only thing, the only thing, and they they brought this up on I think uh, maybe somewhere on the Switch Network with the Hololens was it would be good for for um, realtors. So if you wanted to kind of do a walkthrough of a house, it's always and you're, realtors. You're you're <laughs> moving across the country for work or something, and you you need to go and look at houses before you even get there. Um, Maybe, but to me, that's such a small. I'm sure people move every day. Lots of people move every day. The people that would go and strap on this headset, I, 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 I'm just, I'm like I said, I, I'm more than willing to hear people's ideas of where, where it can be used. I just can't figure a good fit for myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, here, so, so me playing a video game. I, I need to be spatially aware of where my kid is, where things going on around me are, and that right. this breaks well, you. And kind it's of a very that. special. Like said, I, it's maybe, a, maybe I'm the oddball out here. I just I, having a hard time wrapping my. It's head a very it. and it's a very special it's case special. too because uh, typically when they've been set up for VR, it's like chained to your your computer desk or chained to your console. Mm-hmm. You know, you're you're there in front of your console at least, right? Um, in some of the samples that they've had, I mean, I guess it's been mostly computer based. Um, but we're talking about something on the phone again. You could be anywhere, but you should be uh, anchored down. You know, uh, it, it, it seems to be. You know where I would like to use it is a, like a yoga app, because whenever you're using something on your phone, like I'm holding, let's say I'm I'm actually being athletic or something, and holding. I'm trying to hold a pose while looking at my phone, and and, and it would be right, you know, something along maybe exercise wise might be yeah, something that could be. along. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, could, I could definitely see that. Yeah, yeah, I, but again, I think like something like a Google Glass fits that even mm-hmm. more so because you can actually see around you, mm-hmm. and it's that just kind of add a little heads-up display thing, or even maybe a little bit that that a Hololens could too, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I don't know. It's interesting. I, I there's no what killer we, app. We, there's really not a killer app for VR yet. No sobering up. No, no, no there's no sober up for that. That's for sure. So here would be something kind of cool. So use the the so you have your your phone. This is the front. This is the back. Um, the the high quality camera, not the not the selfie cam, video conferencing cam, but the high quality cam. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be facing forward, right? Right. So if you could, if you could take in, and I don't know if the processing on the phone is fast enough to keep up, but take the video, live video feed off the normal camera and project that into an overlay or project that somehow and, and work with that inside of the VR headset, that could be kind of cool. But I don't think, and, and I know Google's working on this with some of their camera technology, I don't know if your camera can necessarily measure depth. So right. it's not like it's going to be able to do a three-dimensional overlay. 
display and it's one camera like room, it, but at least you, if you, you had if you had a picture in picture of what was going on in front of you yeah mm-hmm. yeah at least maybe at least helpful or even if like some of those do have the 3d cameras i mean they're kind of been gimmicky ones and i don't there's there's a lot around mm-hmm. them anymore but if it had the 3d two lens camera on the back side you could you could actually kind of transpose that in, into it so you'd still be in 3d but uh, that'd be that'd be weird that'd be weird well i uh, won't touch you'd be in 3d and 3d there you go. I, do, what, did you see about the Google I.O.? Tickets for Google I.O.? Yeah, coming up. on sale, just announced. Did, no, did you see how they're, you have to win them. You can't, you have to, you, it's, what? it's a chance. You, you are, essentially you sign up for two days. Okay. For a chance to buy these tickets. Okay. Just only select people. Since there's so many people trying to sign up, they're only selecting, you know, some sort of random. I think, I don't know, maybe, I don't know if they've modified it, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's the first year they've done this because oh, really? i remember the, i thought last year it was a lottery was it a lottery, it was a lottery last, lottery year? last year okay yeah yeah i yeah. thought I, okay i couldn't remember because this gotten that crazy because they were selling out in like <laughs> no time and how yeah. many people if you look at the i was watching the i saw the announcement come through mm-hmm. i think i got an email or something about it and i watched the uh one their site's awesome <laughs> by the way <laughs> um I don't know if this one's it, uh, but it, here's the, here's one of the things, and, and I'm not a developer, so I have no room to talk. But I think it's unfair mm-hmm. that, and I'm sure if you're if you're an all star, if you're a Twitter or you're you're a major app, you're I'm sure there's some way to get an invite. Right. Um, I mean, these to me these, these events are really meant for the developers and the hardware manufacturers and the people that are eating, living, breathing Google, whether it be Chrome browser apps or gear or whatever. Um, I feel like when you go to this, and don't get me wrong, I understand why everyone wants to go. They want to go because they give away four times worth the ticket. But to be (laughs) fair. So you can get a Chromebook and you can get 18 other cool little trinkets but to be fair then... everything's available online all the presentations are available online you dig i mean you do get a little bit extra like you know you get the stuff you get to press the flash a little bit which is very valuable to these guys trying to make connections it's it is something else too like i actually got somebody from google in a room that'll talk to me whoa <laughs> you know i mean i experienced that like like what i can call a phone number for and get service on my google glass this is a new concept with these guys i've been trying to figure out my youtube adsense problem for like five years and never got an answer right um i mean that mm-hmm. That is super, super significant. But again, I, I think it is unfair. But you, but you're right. They have made it into this kind of Oprah effect. They're like, well, you got something free under your chair. It's a Google Glass or a ch- or a chance to buy Google Glass. <laughs> and you got a little like glass <laughs> thing you get to take home. Here's your award for being a rich asshole. Um, but it, but, but I think at that, at that same at that same one, didn't they give away the the Usually get um, the, the Q, which was the TV. Right, right. They gave away a Chromebook. I mean, and that that was the Pixel. So it was like the yeah. Everybody, everybody the went home with a fifteen hundred dollar laptop. Mm-hmm. Wow. And by the way, I, I got to touch one of those Pixels when I picked up the glass, and they are nice. They are super nice. Have they even updated them? Like, is there like a new internals to a Pixel? You know, even since you know, because I mean, that guy I think that was just like glass. That was that thing has been re- has been redesigned in how long? But I mean, they don't need to. I guess I haven't. I haven't seen that, and but I haven't seen on the on the flip side, other than just keeping up with chip developers and what the one of the most recent chips are. I haven't seen a huge change, and I, I give them credit because to me, if if they're not having to change form factor and processor and memory and everything else in those devices, that means they they're a they're coding properly and doing something right at the development level, but also they. They had enough forethought at the hardware level that, that the devices are lasting, and there's no need to change them. Right? They're not, um, yeah, they're not really pushing anything over there. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, but no, it's interesting. You know, we all we all follow along at home. But um, no, if you're big enough, you you're going to get in. I think the uh, the Genie Trapani's and the Jeff Jarvis's are going to get their tickets regardless. You know. Um, so. But if you if you change it, and kind of speaking to what Chilla was saying, if you change it to this lottery system, do you have to change your content? Because now you are not necessarily getting, you know, and, and especially like with the um, 
you're not getting the, those specific developers. You're not getting people who have specific interests like that. You're getting people who like like we said the, the I want a prize. And uh, but I think I think it also discourages that a little bit too. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, yeah, I think it does I think, discourage I th- that. Part. I think there's no shortage of mm-hmm. the people looking for this content. Yeah. I think that's the thing. They're big enough. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're not worried about the wrong people showing up because there'll be enough of the right people that also would kind of like the prize mm-hmm. too. Because um, I mean, it's a, it's a perk. It's a benefit. It's like, hey, you get this thing, not because it's like I get to play with it. Maybe some of the press people, um, but like I get to play with this to make a thing mm-hmm. that before anybody else has a chance to. Like those days, just getting that app together that makes sense for a Q or whatever the next thing is um, is is a huge jump, you know. Before you know, getting the well, I got the SDK and I don't really have the hardware to test this thing on. Uh, it might blow up when people actually get devices out there in the wild, you know. Uh, geez, if I just had something to run this on to see what problems I would run into, you know. Um, so I mean, I think that's or <laughs> plus the Pixel mm-hmm. back to the Pixel. That's just like the hardcore Google developer. That is the like their MacBook Pro, you know, um, is a very much of a status thing, I think. Well, I, and and I don't think it hurts the big people where where I was coming from, and, I, and I'm sorry, I probably wasn't clear. No, oh. um, I think it hurts. I think it hurts the little startup. It hurts. Yes. The kid, the kid in the basement, that let's just say he he could he he's coming out with his app and he needs to to go meet people and maybe he either has questions about how to how to properly engage in social networking to get the word mm-hmm. out about his app. Mm-hmm. I, I think it, it, or, it hurts that, that just starting up or even, company, even or your, even your, your person in their basement. I mean, not that flappy bird needed to, to go anywhere to, to get heard or seen, but I'm sure there's, there's so many apps out there that so many people are unaware of or never mm-hmm. become aware of. And the person that invested a year's worth of time and thousands of dollars, if if they would have made it to one of these events and, and collaborated with others, could have really launched something life changing for for hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions. Mm-hmm. And that's where I think it's it kind of keeps that person back in the oh, I'll just attend from home. Mm-hmm. Hey, and it's definitely. It, 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 and that's that's the lottery is is you get a chance to be in the, it's like you get a chance to be in the presence of these people of these these the, the next Steve Jobs is of Google's right, um, but uh, but it, you're right I mean at least like the information is not constrained at least right mm-hmm. um, the information is all up there it, again is that man if I just get to talk to the right person here you know like I am just. I've attended so many events in the last week, and I and I had for so long. And I like just going last night, even though like I'm not sure if the program I attended last night was really for me. The conversations I had before and after were like, this is the stuff you know that's gonna put me in a different direction. Is making that chance encounter with that one person who does that thing that completely lines up with the thing I do, you know? And it's like, wow, we should completely work together. And 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 like that's the kind of. Uh, uh, a weird thing that happens at an event like this. I don't know. Maybe this event's too big for something like that, though, <laughs> too. Because I mean, even with this lottery system, like, like there are thousands at this place. You know, I mean, this is bigger. I, Sheila, I think this is bigger than New York Comic Con. Well, it, it, but I've been to I've been to conferences where there's five, six thousand people, mm-hmm. and usually at least from from my experience they have breakout sessions and they they have the other thing they have is they have dedicated rooms almost like podcamp where there was the one room you could go to if you wanted to just kind of spin up your own collaboration nice. ideas yeah um it was rooms like that but they all were dedicated to something so it could be some kind of certain kind of administration or a certain kind of development um different different things of that nature where so i go into and i'm just going to make something up i go into the google material design room because i want to make sure i already have a mobile app a website and um a watch app and i want to bring material design into all those not only am i going to be able to speak to an expert about how to do that 
I'm going to meet other people that are looking to potentially do the same kind of thing. And then it's, it's a relationship I can foster and I can collaborate with them going forward. Speaking earlier and, and, and kind of looping this back, getting that survey and that collaboration engine, what better people to collaborate and survey, but other people going through the same thing, because mm -hmm. they're going to be able to toss you ideas of what they learned. And they're also going to give you feedback on what you're doing. I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I just feel like those are the people that, that should be there. And I'll, and, and here for, from the fact of the people trying to either get a free device or trying to, or, or media people, what, what better way to, if everyone can watch online, why necessarily you can make the same argument why do media people need to be there mm -hmm. and if it's all about getting a free device let anyone sign up and you get the free you do like a swag thing mm -hmm. i'm sure google would make a mint just selling <laughs> a swag bag mm -hmm. yeah yeah like get in on it uh but i i think well there's also supply demand because those are early devices too so i think you gotta watch mm -hmm. those numbers um and considering how first come first serve tickets came for this you never know. Guys, I want to touch on a couple of things happening in the area and a couple of things happening around the network, and we got to get out of here so the video game guys can get in. Um, of course, first of all, uh, if you're in the area, the uh, our friends over at Build Guild Pittsburgh are having an event. You can check out on Meet, meet Up. Look up, just uh, do a Google search for Build Guild Pittsburgh, and you'll find it uh, February 11th, Wednesday at Lot 17 over in Bloomberg. Bloomberg? Field. Bloomfield. Field. Thank you. Sorry. I was just there last night, too. Um, but a great group of guys, uh, designers and coders and stuff, uh, being real cool. Um, and uh, da, 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 sorry, I had a message. Also, our friends at the hardware store have a lot of stuff going on as well. Um, they, they, of course, the big Let's Build an Incubator event happened uh, last weekend, last uh, two weeks ago. Uh, that video is now up on their YouTube channel, the entire hour-long thing. It, it had a, it actually kind of follow-up conversations about this last night, too. They're trying to make an incubator, but everybody in the incubator owns a part of the other companies. Like, it's a completely self and crowd funded ish incubator. So, if you want to check out that, if you understand more about financials than I do, go check out that video because I got lost. Um, and also, we Do you guys like Yik Yak? <laughs> I do like Yik Yak. By chance. I do like butt stuff. We got a val Valentine's Day. Yik Yak is up on SorgatronMedia.com. You can go check that out with Katie here and Will. Also, uh, reading the Yik Yaks from their Valentine's box. Uh, so go please check that out and, and, and have fun with that. I don't know if Yik Yak likes us or not. I know you were talking with them on Twitter the other day, Katie. <laughs> um, but anyways. They, they started. They started. They, they started? Okay. Okay, they there you go. Yay. Have they started anything since uh, we started putting the video out? I should really, I'll tag them. We'll, I'll, we'll, I'll tweet double it check. again we'll double check. It. But, uh, but we'll go check that out. Yeah, we'll put you in the right mood for Valentine's Day. Also, a lot of stuff happening over at Sorgatron.com. My, my daily good morning. Morning uh, podcast talking about Steel, Ta Steel Town's indie program from last night. Talking about uh, my thoughts on Indiegogo and Refresh Pittsburgh. Our friend Josh Sager, who's been on the show a couple of times, uh, was presenting there. Always great. Net neutrality. We didn't talk net neutrality. I uh, had my thoughts on it. I guess somebody was gave me the whole conspiracy theory on net neutrality on YouTube. <laughs> I I'm, go go look at the YouTube. Watch the comments. Uh, good morning with Michael Sorg. If you search for that, you'll find me. And uh, my Twitter friends are real. Damn it. Uh, follow up to a conversation we had with uh, one of my clients last week on educational grand rounds. <laughs> um, so it also a lot of great, a lot of great conversations happening on, on, on all of those. I'm really, really enjoying that. And also please go to our YouTube feed or awesomecast.net and check out the, uh, our, our minute long, uh, uh, not minute. It's a little more than a minute, but our, our real quick uh, awesome cast kind of check ins throughout the week. You know, because you know, sometimes something happens on Wednesday morning and we don't get to it the next week. So at least we get a little bit of commentary on it. You can talk with us a little bit throughout the week as well. And you can see what I look like uh, 10 minutes after getting out of the shower in the morning, too. Um, there's one this morning. Oh, well, that's one from last week with Raspberry Pi upgrades. But we also talked about. Um, 
if I follow up my notes here, we also talked about Amazon potentially buying Radio Shack. Of course, we know that's not a thing. Uh, saying goodbye to Radio Shack today. Um, uh, Microsoft buying Sunrise and, of course, Google Glass uh, being redesigned potentially. Uh, so I got to spout off a little bit about that. So go check that out and please comment and let us know what you think of it. Anything we need uh, in it. You know, we would want uh, some more opportunities for people uh, to, to get in the uh, Get in, get in with us here. Uh, so, with that, anything else going on uh, in the area that you guys have uh, in mind? Uh, you want to get out there? Anything? Plug in. Anything happening in this town? <laughs> <laughs> other, than the, other than the Instagram, Instagram mood ring on top Instagram, of Instagram, uh, we'll be watching the Instagram mood ring. Hopefully, we have a report on mm -hmm. that here in a week. So, um, so Katie is at K Dutters on the Twitters. Where's the poor potty Instagrams at? I know. If I've really let that go. I should really make a comeback with that. Bring them back. And Bring them back to potties. And if you're in the downtown Pittsburgh area, uh, guess which yaks are hers. Yeah. I've been doing something fun today, and I want to see if anybody noticed. I, I'm going to start putting in lines from everybody is free to wear sunscreen and see if anybody notices. Very nice. I don't think any of the kids will. No, I, I really feel like they have no idea what we're doing. The kids no, are just no, like, there's... <laughs> you don't understand. These old folks are messing with you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, oh, I, and I do want to do the um, the yak we were, I was telling you about the other day where um, I, I'm currently in Market Square and wearing women's underwear. Do you think anybody can tell? Like, I, I think I'm just going to start yakking things like that. Just like crowded places. Be like, am I the only one here thinking about this? <laughs> well, and that, that's actually a good place to get pictures of porta potties. There's so much construction between grant street and market square it's ridiculous so i'm mm -hmm. sure near market square um plenty of porta potty pictures for you to get mm -hmm. I, I got one when i was scouting hobo p places in the, the the finer points of the other side of town there mm -hmm. anyways on that note if you guys want to send us your porta porta oh uh at chilla on twitter too i'm sorry i forgot my plugs <laughs> that's okay. Wait, that's Chilla on Awesome that's Cast. Chilla. I, I, I just, I just don't have the porta potty pictures to, to support the plug. No, no. Oh, and I'm on Snapchat. Sorgatron. Mm -hmm. You're on, on Snapchat? there. I'm doing stuff on Snapchat. I'm doing stories. How's that working? You, you should do a review. I, I want to see a review of that. No, what I want to do. Because, oh, sorry, I'm getting a little feedback off of you. Um, what I want to do, because I actually had a conversation going on, on Facebook. They were teaching me, because I'm like, I can't tell if anybody's looking at my snaps. I feel like I'm just snapping into a void here, because I'm just doing stuff as stories. And and they said, like, oh, you tap on the story. It tells you how many people viewed. You tap on each individual thing you put in the story and tells you who viewed it. No idea. No idea. So I want to do a hangout with like a bunch of these people that I'm snapping with on here that have been on a lot longer than me, and just like, okay, how are you doing this? Because there's no direction whatsoever in Snapchat, at all. Hmm. Like, that's why the that pe that's like your barrier. That's your barrier because the young people can figure it out, right? Just like I can figure out Twitter, <laughs> but my grandma can't. You know, it, 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 so we know they're not going to get involved. That's why Facebook blew up because now my mom's on it. You know, now it's over, and now it's like mom's never figuring this thing out. Because I can't even figure it out. Because damn it, I can't. Um, it's with the teenagers. And the teenagers are all talking to each other and figuring out, oh, this is how I send you my boobies. Um, <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, Happy everybody. Valentine's Woo! Day, guys. Check us out at AwesomeCast.net. AwesomeCast on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Plus. Please subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio, and wherever else you may find an awesome cast. Hopefully that's us. There's a couple other people like to use that name, too. Um, We're the awesomest. We are the awesomest. Yes, we are. Big thanks to Mike Allen. At Mike Allen PR, doing the notes all night long. Apparently, our show title tonight is Blunted Feelings. I think I'm good with that. Um, and you can join us here live Tuesday. We're setting up around 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time at live.awesomecast.net. Links over at awesomecast.net as well uh, on show day. And you can uh, chime in in the chat just like our friends Bobby FJ Town, Tony Garza, Hot Wheels have uh, throughout the, out the, the night. So with that, thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome day. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. If you like professional wrestling, want your discussions, no holds barred, check out wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.